only use it 25 times. You only use it 50 times. You only use it 100 times. I figure out, I'm just, I'm, but no, I'm just dumb enough to figure if I turn over there every time I need it and use it, it's still real. Amen. Amen. If I confess my sin, he's faithful and just to forgive me of my sin. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Amen. I still believe that. Amen. Mark chapter 1. If you're there, say amen. amen. Let's, I'm just going to read two verses here and then we'll pray. Look at verse 12. And immediately the Spirit driveth him into the wilderness. And he was there in the wilderness forty days, tempted of Satan, and was with the wild beasts, and the angels ministered unto him. Lord, we love you. God, I thank you so much for your blessings. I thank you, God, for the Spirit that we can feel on Wednesday night. God, come into your presence, Lord, and praise and honor and glorify you, God. Help me right now, and Lord, as I try to preach, I pray, God, you just touch me. And God, I pray, God, you just clear my mind of everything, God, except for what you wanted to say. And God, I pray, God, you touch hearts right now, God. You lead in God, and whatever's done, we'll praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. This is Jesus being tempted in the wilderness. And, and, and I, I hit on this a little bit Sunday morning, but it was just like the Lord just kept bringing me right back to this message. And I, I want to uh, preach this message tonight. Uh, it's the temptation of Jesus. Most of us know this very, very well. We've, we've studied it, we've heard it, we've heard it preached many, many times. And, uh, but you've got to understand something. And the Bible tells us in, in verse 7 and 8 that Jesus' birth was announced by John the Baptist. And the Bible talks about how that Jesus uh, was uh, submitted unto baptism then when Jesus was baptized. You understand? Jesus was not baptized to cleanse him of any sin. Amen. 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 Jesus had no sin. Amen. The Bible, the Bible tells us, and the Bible is very plain, and we know that Jesus was baptized ceremonial. That was all it was. He was just going through all the motions, uh, crossing all the T's, dotting all the I's, so that, you know, for him to be baptized. And the Bible says as soon as he was baptized, you know, as I thought about, thought about this a little bit, Scott, as soon as Jesus was baptized, this is the first time, that in 30 years that the Trinity is back together. I ain't got time to preach on that. I'm not going to preach on that. But Jesus is baptized. Jesus is in the water. The Bible says that God the Father speaks from heaven and says, This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And buried the Bible said that the Holy Ghost came down in the form of a dove and sat upon. So the Trinity, for, for 30 years, the Trinity had not been together. And now the Trinity is together again right here in the Scripture. And then we come to one word, one word that, 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 that puzzled me just a little bit. And immediately the Spirit driveth him. It, and that word drive here does, does not mean that Jesus was forced to go into the wilderness. Uh, basically what it, it, simply, it simply means is that the Spirit of God moved on Jesus in such a strong way that it moved Him into the wilderness. I, 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 and I, I don't even know if I'm going to follow the outline tonight. I've got so much going in my mind right now. Uh, but I want you to just think about something. The time of this temptation. And I'm not going to go back and read, read Matthew's account, but the time, verse 12 right there says, and immediately. Now I just told you some of the things that's happened in this chapter uh, preceding this. We find out that Jesus, and, and, and his, his coming was announced by John the Baptist. Behold, the Lamb of God, who taken away the sins of the world. Jesus is baptized. The Trinity come back together. Can you imagine standing there on the, the banks of the Jordan River as Jesus Christ is baptized and the Holy Trinity is back together? Yeah. I cannot imagine being there. I, I, I know how I feel when God shows up in His church. I can't imagine how I feel on the side of the Jordan River when the Trinity all shows up at the same time. I'd have probably had myself a, a fit. <clears throat> but the Bible says, immediately. Now, what Jesus was getting ready to face in the wilderness, Preacher John, came immediately after probably his greatest so far victory. Have you ever noticed, and maybe this is just me, have you ever noticed when you come in and you have a great service and you, you, you have a great victory and you have a great time in the Lord and it seems like things are going good and it seems like you know, the Lord shows up and does something good in your life and all of a sudden in me,
As I was sitting there thinking about, you know, thinking about the uh, the message, and the Bible tells us in Deuteronomy chapter two, where where, where God told that, that Moses and God told us that you can pass this mountain long enough, you know. And my my problem is that I, we can come in and have a, a throw out service on Sunday and Sunday night have a great time, and, and God show up and, and, and miraculous, and it just uh, I mean you can't hardly really explain how good God is. And on Monday the devil shows up, and all of a sudden I'm back down in the Come on, Amen. Amen. This word right here immediately tells us there is no lag time, Jackie, between what happened there and the next thing that happened. Immediately means that right after Jesus was, well, the Trinity was there, immediately he is driven into the wilderness. One moment he was hearing the approval of his father. One moment he filled the Holy Ghost Brother Bill, all over him. And the next moment he's in the wilderness. Somebody say amen. 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 Sometimes that's the way it happens. You got to understand something. You you're never more vulnerable to the devil than right after a big victory. Amen. I'm telling you when the devil... <coughs> I prove it, preacher. Look at Elijah on Mount Carmel. <laughs> I mean, it don't get no better than that. Elijah on Mount Carmel plays about a 46-word prayer and the fire of God falls from heaven, burns up everything. I mean, he, he shouting the victory. they killing the false prophets. And in the very next day, Jezebel says, I'm going to kill you. And he just goes into the mother groups. Somebody say amen right there. Oh, don't make me good that where y'all at. I'm preaching to everybody. I'm preaching to everybody in this church. I'm telling you right now, there ain't nobody immune from what I'm preaching about right now. Understand that. I, how you know, preacher? Because I know what I'm talking about. I've been there. I've been there. I'm telling you, folks. I'm going to be honest with you. The only reason I show up at church every Sunday, Sunday night and Wednesday, that's because I'm the preacher. Oh. I know y'all ain't gonna leave me right there. I know you you gonna sit there and lie. I, oh, I want to come to church. I just can't hardly wait to come to church. Oh. Oh, I'm just being honest now. If it wasn't because I was a preacher, sometimes better I wouldn't be here. I'm just being honest. I told you I got the most honest preacher you ever had in your life. But the struggle is real. You gotta, you gotta be careful. So, and, and I've heard people do this, you know, stand up and say something stupid in church. I mean, they have a great service, and I mean, it seems like it can't get no better. I'm telling you, they stand up and that's why it just can't get no better than this. I'm telling you, I will never turn my back on God. I won't do this and I won't do that. Let me tell you something. You better quit saying never because you will probably do it the next day. Amen. After a good move of God, the devil's gonna show up. Amen. Now, the, the timing of the temptation. we got to fight the devil with everything we've got, folks. I, I, that, that would be what I would title the sermon. Fight the devil. Just like I preached just a few weeks ago. You know, I ain't giving up because he's been ingratitude to Jesus of how good he's been to me. I'm telling you right now, I realize i got to fight the devil. I realize sometimes i got to do things I don't want to. I realize I, I sometimes i just got to man up and i got to say, Devil, I'm not doing that. I'm not going down that road no more. <laughs> Let's look at the territory of the temptation. The Bible says that Jesus was sent into the wilderness. The wilderness, as far as the Jews were concerned, the wilderness was a place of danger. It was a place of gloom. It was a place of the abode of demons. As far as the Jewish people, when they looked out at the wilderness, they looked out at, 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 at all that barren land. They, you know, that was a place of, of gloom, doom, and despair. And that's where they thought that the devil and the demons abode. And guess what? Guess who showed up in the wilderness? <laughs> the devil. Jesus was sent in the wilderness to battle the devil on his own ground. Think about that. Jesus had already invaded his territory when he, when he was born. You know, the Bible tells us in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4, that Satan is the God of this world. So the temptation of Jesus, Jesus shows us three different things. Number one, the devil found out just who he was dealing with. Understand something. The devil realized, the devil realized when his temptation was over, 
The devil realized who Jesus was. He never saw not one miracle. He never saw not one blinded eye uh, uh, healed. He never saw not one stone turned into bread. He never saw anything. He never saw Jesus jump off the fence. I'm telling you right now, but when it was all said and done, he had no idea. He knew exactly who he was dealing with. He knew this was the Son of God. Why? Because he quoted the Word. The son, Jesus, found out just, just, how much, just how much that the father would look out for him in the wilderness. The Bible says that the angels come and minister to him. And understand something in the wilderness that also shows us that there's help for us. Amen. And let me tell you something, folks. The wilderness is free. Amen. You sit here, I mean, everybody, every, I guarantee you over half the crowd tonight, right now, over half this crowd, Mr. John, somebody's in the wilderness. Somebody is not in the wilderness. Maybe somebody's coming out of the wilderness. You somebody's getting ready to go in the wilderness. Let me tell you something. It's real. Right. It's real. Amen. And fight the devil with everything you got, folks. Let's look at the trial of his temptation. Number one, I want you to think about it. the leadership of it. Who sent Jesus there? The Bible says he was driven by the Spirit. Jesus was sent there to be tested. Sometimes we go through the wilderness to be tested. And understand something. The Bible says in James chapter 1 verse 13, Let no man say that he is tempted, I am tempted of God. For God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempted any man. God never leads people to sin. God always leads people away from sin. God never leads people to sin. So God did not lead Jesus into the wilderness so he would so to test him with sin. He tested him with Satan. And sometimes you and I are going to be tested. When I think about this and I think about Job, and we know we all know the story of Job. Satan could not do anything to Job until God okay. Praise God. Satan can't do nothing to you. Until God occasions you. Right. And, if, and, if, and if the devil is coming against you, what you need to understand, you need to say, well, God must have a lot of confidence in me. This is just a test. 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 Understand, you need to keep saying it over and over and over and over. The Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13, There is no temptation taken you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempt, tempted above that you are able, but with, and with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. So if you're sitting there thinking, I can't bear this, then you're calling God a liar. Uh, amen. Come That's on, we're right there. I'm telling you right now. Really? God, just give me that. If you're sitting there saying, I just can't take this, you're calling God a liar. Let me read this. Y'all need to mark this down. Somebody needs to write this down. 1 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 13. There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man. But God is faithful, Amen. who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Understand something. It's hard sometimes. I wonder how hard it got for Jesus after fasting 40 days. I wonder how, I mean, I, I, I told you Sunday, I can't even handle them little imp type demons. You know them? I can't handle them little Barney Five type demons. They, they beat me up all the time. I'm just going to be honest. They, they work me up one side and down the other. I can't handle them. Wonder what Jesus had to go through the school in that wilderness. How about the loneliness? The Bible says he was out there right by his son. For 40 days, not one person. Nothing but wild beasts. Right by himself. Have you ever seen like he was all alone? Okay. <coughs> Have you ever seen like they no I mean you know your family cares and you know you know you got friends to care, but have you ever been like you're just all by yourself? Amen. 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 It's bad when you can feel all alone in the crowd. Amen. I know. You ever been around somebody? They sit there and you can be talking to them and they just kind of stare off at them. Amen. Well, they done checked out. 
A lot of times we ain't careful what we, we talking about. Won't you listen to me? Because they feel alone. Tell you something, folks. All these idiots on TV telling you the church is going to be helped up with prosperity and all that other kind of stuff, that's a lie of the devil. Amen. That's a lie of the devil. The thing about it is, when you feel alone, you're not alone. <laughs> Jesus said, I'll never leave you. Don't forsake you. Amen. 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 And in reality, now in reality, I thought about it, Brother Donald, in reality, every step Jesus took, I guarantee there was 10,000 angels just walking right there, right behind him. <laughs> My Bible tells me in Psalm 91 we have angels right. watching out for us. Yeah. We have angels looking. I, I, you know, even when I can't see, Brother Jerry, even when I can't feel, even when I can't, I, 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 I seem like I'm all by myself. God, Jesus said, I'll never leave you, but I'll never forsake you. I'll be with you until the end of the world. Understand something. You've never gone low enough that Jesus couldn't reach down and pick you up. You've never gone high enough that Jesus wasn't right there with you. You cannot get away from him. He's everywhere present, nowhere absent. I don't care what you're going through. He's right there with you. You might be in the wilderness. Guess what? He's been in the wilderness before you were. You might be on the mountaintop. He's been on the mountaintop before you were. Our duty is to be prepared when the wilderness comes and the weather and by the grace of God come out on the other side still victory. Still a victory. Now, the testimony of the temptation. The Bible says in Luke chapter 4, verse 13, and when the devil had ended all temptation, he departed from him from a season. This would not be the last encounter that Jesus would have with the devil. And guess what? Your wilderness that you're coming into or you're going out of will not be the last encounter that you'll have with the devil. Oh, you can, I mean, if we ain't careful, we come to church and go, Woo, I got, I got through that. I just want to praise the Lord. I got through my wilderness. I just want to praise the Lord. I'm back on the mountaintop. Guess what? They're going to be a devil next week. They're going to be a devil the week after that. They're going to be a devil right on after that. Until Jesus calls us home, we're going to be, they're going to be wilderness after wilderness after wilderness. And guess what? He said, I'll be with you there too. Amen. Amen. The Bible said that the devil left him for a season. And I got to think about this. And this I, I made mention of this Sunday. Why did the devil not? I mean, why did Jesus not listen to the devil? Because he wasn't going to take suggestions from the devil. Right. You and I need to quit listening to the devil. Yes. We need to quit taking suggestions from the devil. Right. Because he's lied to you before. He ain't going to do nothing but lie to you now. Jesus overcame <coughs> Satan because he was sinless. We fall because we're sinful. Now listen, I want you to understand something. We ain't careful we come to church. And we'll sit in church. Saved. We know we saved. <coughs> you know, if we ain't careful, we'll sit there and think, I'm above that. I'm above that. There's sin in every one of us. Amen. That's right. You understand that? I'm telling you right now. There's sin in every last one of us. The first Adam was placed into a beautiful garden in a perfect atmosphere and messed it all up. The second Adam, Jesus, was placed in the wilderness. I mean, with wild beasts and dead devil and, and barrenness and come out victorious. Amen. Amen. Come on. He was the only one now. <clears throat> now I'll, I'll read you this story and then I'm going to come to a close. In 1961, a man named Adolf Eichmann went on trial for, the, for his crimes as one of the participant principal architects of the Jewish Holocaust. One of the men who testified against the ex-Nazi was a concentration camp survivor named Yael Denewer. A film clip from Eichmann's 1961 trial showed the Denewer walking into the courtroom, stopping short, seeing Eichmann for the first time since the Nazi had sent him to Austria 18 years earlier. Denewer began to sob uncontrollably and then fainted, collapsing onto a heap on the floor. As the presiding judge 
judicial officer found at the gavel in order for the crowd of the courtroom. Was Denure overcome by hatred, fear, or horrid memories? Now listen. No, it was none of these. Denure explained that when he saw Eichmann, he realized that Eichmann was not the godlike figure that he had seen so many years ago in the concentration camp. He realized that Eichmann was an ordinary man. And this is what he said. I was afraid about myself, said Denor. I saw that I am capable to do the same things that he did. And then Mike Wallace was doing the interview. Mike Wallace said this, there's Eichmann in every one of us. Get off your high horse. That's right. Every one of us in here is capable of sin. Amen. Amen. I've said this before. Every one of us in here is one step from stupid. That's right. I mean just making a gun. Y'all might not know what that word is. Ask me after church. I'll tell you. <laughs> I mean everybody in here. I mean the, 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 the one that's closest to the Lord right now can be closest to the devil by tomorrow. Come on. It's in, our, it's in our nature. It's in our nature to just mess up. It's in our nature to just to just fall apart. That's in our nature. So what we have to do, we have to cultivate the new man. We have to beat down that old man. We have to do our very best to beat him down every day. That's right. That's the only way we can ever make it, is to beat down the old man. I'm telling you right now, He's still in there. Yes, he He's still in there. Yes, he I heard a preacher one time. He was kind of making a joke, but he said a lot of a lot of Christians want to, uh, you know, say I'm I, I, I crucified the old man, but you want to drag the coffin around with you. Yeah. He said, and every once in a while somebody make you mad, and you want to stop and open up that coffin and say, hold on a minute, let me introduce you to somebody. <laughs> Folks, if you don't kill him. If you don't beat him down, he'll destroy you. Yeah. He'll destroy you. Amen. Fight the devil. When I was in the troll school, uh, they would put us, they would team us up with, with other people about the same size uh, that we were. So, you know. We had to box and we had to wrestle and we had to do different things like that. But they wanted you to, wanted you to know how to fight when you got out there. And uh, it was amazing to me the people that would quit. I mean, get hit one time and just quit. Give up. I'm not, <laughs> this ain't for me. <coughs> it's real easy to do that, Jackie, when you're in a gymnasium at the Criminal Justice Academy. But when you're on the side of the highway right. in the middle of the night, and it's your life or his life, there ought not be no quit in you. And when the devil got you by the neck, and the devil's doing his very best to destroy you, there ought not be no quit. Amen. There ought not be no quit in us. I'm going to fight the devil for everything I got. I'm telling you, I know how I used to live, and I know where he had me at, and I thank God for where Jesus brought me from. So I want to make up my mind now that I'm going to fight the devil with everything I got. Jesus defeated him and, and never laid a hand on him. Amen. Amen. Physically, we can't do it. Physically, you and I are no match for the smallest demon in hell. But glory to God, understand something. I understand something. The Spirit of God is what, uh, what allowed Jesus Christ to stand. It was the Word of God that gave Jesus Christ the ammunition to get rid of the devil. You and I need to know the Word of God. We need to quote the Word of God. We need to put Him on the run and keep Him on the run. Amen. Amen. Fight the devil. Whatever thing you got. Yes. That's right. Fight it. I will come back soon. How afraid it is to serve a living.